Hi, my name is Karen Dodson, and I work with NASA's Astrobiology Institute in the Education and Public Outreach Program. And today I'm here to show you how to build a Winogradsky column. The first thing to do in building a Winogradsky column is go somewhere and get some mud. And it doesn't have to be mud from any special place. It can be a creek in your backyard, or a lake, a stream, the ocean. You can use sand along the ocean if you'd like, or a lagoon or a marsh. Basically anywhere with dirt and water is fine. So I'm trying to get the mud uh, as, as free of rocks as I can. This is a nice, really rich, dark mud. Um, but again, like I said, you can use sand. Um, any, any mud is fine. It doesn't have to be as dark as this. But you do want to try to keep the rocks out of it if you can. It should be pretty soft mud, um, pretty wet mud, I should say. I'm just getting enough to do our, our two uh, soda bottles worth. If you're doing a whole classroom, if, if each student wants their own, you need to figure out how many liters of mud to get. And it might help if you bring a, uh, a shovel instead of an ordinary kitchen spoon. Great, and that should just about do it. Let's go back to the lab and see the next step. Now we're back in the lab, and I'm going to show you what to do to assemble your Winogradsky column. The first thing you want to do is take your bottle. We've take, This is a juice bottle. We also have a soda bottle. You cut the top off, invert it, and you'll use the top as a funnel to fill the bottom of the bottle. Okay. Now you want to scoop the mud that you've gathered into some sort of mixing bowl. And you want the mud to be about the consistency of a milkshake, so add add whatever amount of water you need to make it that consistency. The amounts that you'll be using vary according to what bottles you're using and how many columns you're going to be building, so you can figure out how much money you need to use. So there are two other ingredients that you need to add to, your, to the mud to make the column. Uh, one of those is some type of carbon, and uh, in this case, the carbon source that we're using is shredded newspaper. Uh, some other carbon sources you can use are um, sawdust or grass clippings, um, oatmeal is a, is a good source, but we're using newspaper shavings. So we stir that in to the mud. The other ingredient you need is some type of sulfur. In this case, we're using egg yolk. And we put the egg yolk in. You can also, you can use hard boiled eggs, you can use raw eggs. Uh, another thing, is another source of sulfur is cheese but the egg yolk is pretty easy to, to use in the classroom. And stir that up. Add more water if you need to. And then scoop it into your columns. When you get a little bit in there, what you want to do is tap it to make sure to keep all the air out, to make the air bubbles rise to the top because you don't want air trapped in the column. So put some in, tap it, and keep adding mud until it's filled. Okay, once the column is filled, tap it a little bit more. And you want about a quarter inch of water on the top. So again, you can add water from your mud source or you can use tap water as fine to get that quarter inch at the top. Then you can cover it with saran wrap. You can put a rubber band around it or tape the saran wrap down, just anything to keep the water from evaporating. And you're done. And here you have your Winogradsky column. So what you want to do with this is put it in a well-lit room away from direct light. You want to keep it from getting too, too hot, no extreme temperatures. Um, you can also put it uh, about two feet away from a 40 to 60 watt light bulb. And it takes about three to six weeks to see the stratification. So you can check it every day, have your students take notes, uh, record the conditions, maybe the temperatures, and, um, and see what you get. 